Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Channel. Welcome back to another devlog. And we did not have a Hazel devlog last week. And I apologize for that. I was very busy working and perfecting. There's some exciting things happening with Hazel over the last few weeks. And today I want to show you something that I've basically been working on almost nonstop for the last two weeks. Something that might seem relatively simple, but in my opinion, it's very difficult to get it completely right. And I think it's honestly one of the most important things for a renderer, which might be a big call, but I just, hopefully this video will kind of allow me to explain to you why I think that is. So during the last devlog, which I will link up there, we talked about lights. I talked about how we added uh, four plus rendering into Hazel so that we could have all of these point lights. Everything was looking a lot more beautiful, but there were just a few things missing. And that has to do with how light actually works in the real world and how we kind of interpret the intensity of light. When we look into the world with our own eyes or with a camera, a huge part of how we gauge how bright something is, is by something called light bleed. Now what light bleed is, is basically when we look at something or when we take a photo of something and there's quite a bright light source, the actual light when it hits either the camera sensor or our actual eyes, I mean it kind of like bleeds over the top of everything else. And this is something that games have also been doing for a while, it's called Bloom. So what Bloom is, and I mean, Bloom can be a lot of things and it has been done very differently over like the last 20 or so years. But basically Bloom is a way for us to kind of simulate that natural effect of light bleed by just keeping track of what is excessively bright or brighter than a certain threshold and then kind of making it bleed over the top of everything else. It's also the basics of how emission works and how we can actually have materials that appear to emit light, even though they might not actually be emitting light into the real world unless we actually have like, you know, global illumination or other kind of techniques like that, they will appear as if they are emitting light because they kind of are also contributing to the bloom. Without this effect, I have to say it's very difficult to write a renderer that in my opinion, looks good. I think that this is like, it's almost, it's almost underrated. And that's a big call because throughout like the history of games, there have been a lot of examples of games pushing this way too much and having like excessive bloom. I mean, the first game that comes to mind is Oblivion. Oblivion, I think, or like all those kind of PlayStation 3 era games, I think a lot of them push bloom a little bit too, a little bit too much. It's also very common to use bloom with an HDR pipeline. Now you don't, technically have to. There's no reason why you have to use Bloom in an HDR pipeline, but it kind of makes more sense because when we have those values that exceed one, we can kind of use that energy to kind of smear it across our screen. And a lot of this might not make much sense, but we're about to dive into Hazel and actually take a look at this in action. I was very pedantic about this effect in Hazel. I wanted to make sure that this was as good as it could be because as I mentioned, I think it's extremely important for scenes and I have to say I am very pleased with the result. Now I'm not gonna go into like a technical deep dive of how I did this. If you guys wanna see a technical deep dive, like I'll open up render doc and I'll show everything basically, um, as well as like all the techniques I gathered and my research into this and all of that, let me know in the comments section below and I will make that video. I'm actually, I actually kind of want to because I think it's a, it was quite an interesting journey. This is going to be more of like a video where I actually show it in action. Um, and it'll be like a fun time there. But I will say that Hazel processes all of its bloom inside a compute shader instead of kind of doing it the potentially traditional graphics pipeline way. I think it's it's quite common these days to actually start moving a lot of post-processing effects to compute shaders because I think that that makes a lot of sense. And of course, running it in a compute shader also unlocks a lot of extra performance essentially for your engine. Anyway, let let's dive in to Hazel. We have an absolutely blank scene here, which should be uh, pretty interesting to look at. Now, I, I'm going to move this down here because I know the face cam is kind of in the way. So we have scene renderer settings, which have some bloom settings that we're kind of going to be focusing on. And I'll just take you through uh, essentially how it works and what it looks like. So we have a blank scene, as I mentioned. Let's go ahead and add some stuff to it. So maybe we'll start off with a cube and a plane. Uh, and maybe I will add a directional light. Okay, so this is pretty a pretty simple setup. We'll get rid of the grid. As I mentioned, Bloom is, is on by default. So if we make this light excessively bright, you can see it starts to have this kind of glow effect because when we look at this light, it's so bright that it starts bleeding onto pretty much everything. 
I have to say that this effect starts looking pretty cool if we play around with like some point lights. Uh, maybe I'll make this one a little bit smaller. And if we uh, play around with some colors as well, so maybe I'll make this one red. I'll beef up the intensity and the radius. You can see that it starts to look pretty cool. We can obviously combine this with like many other lights and many other colors like this. Um, maybe I'll make it blue. I like making things blue and red because we get a nice kind of pink in the middle, which looks pretty cool. And you can see that like the scene immediately looks, I think, a whole lot cooler because we have this kind of glow going off. If I turn off Bloom as an example, I mean, look at that. Like, doesn't that just look like trash? I mean, on, off. Now you could argue this is too much, but of course you have all of these settings here. So we have a threshold. This is basically, that basically means anything above this threshold will be kind of considered too bright to handle without light bleeding. So um, anything above the threshold gets kind of put into the Bloom pipeline. Um, so if I bring this down, we'll get more bloom because even darker kind of areas are considered to be blooming. Um, but then we could also increase this and then it needs to be like above 2.2, you could say units of light energy um, to actually be affected by bloom. But then we can also kind of dampen this by using um, the knee. There's also an up sample scale, which has to do with how like up the up sampling actually happens. There's an intensity, which is basically just the way that it gets composited back into the main texture. So you can kind of reduce this and it will just not appear as bright, um, or you can increase it and it will be even brighter. And then there's actually also, also a dirt texture, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So um, that's the basics of kind of how you can use light and all of that for Bloom. If I add a skylight as well, maybe I'll make it dynamic. This is probably gonna be, gonna make things very bright. Let me just dim that skylight a little bit and maybe set it to be like a different um, time of day. You can also, you can kind of start to see how this can um, start looking a little bit more like a more realistic scene in daylight. And also one thing I might do is um, exposure is also obviously tied into this. So you can overexpose things, underexpose things. If we start to underexpose things, you can see that we get back a lot of that detail. So in other words, when this was very bright, it looked very white. Um, and it uh, obviously that kind of color will come back if you lower the exposure. One of the benefits of an HDR pipeline. Now this would, this would actually go fantastically with auto exposure or some kind of like adaptive exposure, but we don't have anything like that yet. Although I probably will add something like that in the future. Okay, so let's let's kind of get rid of that skylight maybe, and we'll talk about emissive materials. So a, another cool thing with this, so if I delete, um, let's delete the point lines, is we also, as a result of having a bloom pipeline, we can now do emission or emissive materials. So if I go into the materials down here, and then maybe let's change it to like green or something like that. If I start to increase this emissive parameter, you can see we actually, kind of get a material that is emissive, it emits light. Now it doesn't actually emit light. You might notice that if I bring it down, it's such a it's such a cool illusion though, that it really almost looks like it does. I mean, if I bring this down here, it looks like it's emitting light. Now it's not, it's just the bloom. Like if I disable bloom, this looks like trash, right? I mean, it's clearly kind of not being shaded the same way. Like if I set this back to zero, you can see we, can, we can't see anything here. Um, so it is kind of still, emitting light in a way, but it's just without bloom, you can't really see that effect at all um, compared to like what it is there, which is uh, obviously a big difference. Now, it's very easy to actually make this emit light if you want to. Um, you could simply like add a point light and parent it to this object. Alternatively, you could even add a point light to the actual entity cube. So if I just add a point light over here um, and then I'll set it to be like the same color and then maybe I'll decrease that radius. I don't know why the default radius is so high. Um, and then up that intensity, uh, then you can see that we kind of have a, a bright cube here. And if we had like, let's add like maybe a sphere. If we had some other kind of um, objects in the scene that could actually catch some of that emitted light, you can see that it actually kind of gets tinted green like that because we are actually in fact um, emitting light now because we have a real point light. And again, just for comparisons, bloom off and bloom on, huge difference. And again, might be a lot, maybe you can reduce like the uh, emission or reduce the intensity if you think that's a little bit too much. But um, 
yeah, I think it's pretty cool and it definitely gives a lot more kind of uh, creative control. Now, this scene is the audio demo scene, which I thought I would also kind of demo. This is quite a quite a bright kind of dynamic sky that we have over here. You can see how it's kind of bleeding over all of this. Uh, if I disable the bloom, this is quite like a, a sharp edge. You don't get any of that light bleed, but with the bloom enabled, you obviously see the light bleed. Um, and if we hit play, we can obviously walk around this scene. I'll turn the grid off. It looks pretty nice. It's also pretty easy to like take this cylinder, for example, and let's like stretch it out, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And suddenly we basically have ourselves, if I delete that point light, cause the icon is a little bit annoying. We basically have like a lightsaber. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, so we can now do lightsabers in Hazel as well, which is pretty cool. Now, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we also have this kind of dirt texture. Now dirt is, uh, is basically like a little bit of like a smudge overlay that you might have on your camera lens. A lot of games do this. I mean, off the top of my head, I just remember like all the suppression effects and stuff in Battlefield 3. They used to always chuck on like a bit of a, a dirty kind of lens texture. Unreal Engine actually has some pretty nice documentation on this. So there's a bloom dirt mask. This is just under their like bloom kind of um, documentation page. And you can see what that is. Um, and then you can just add it here and they've actually got one here. So if we try and plug this one into Hazel, so here we are our kind of dirt mask. Then you can see if you pay attention to like these areas, you can, there's also an intensifier, so I can just increase that and make it like really crazy. But you can see that we get these kind of smudges. Now they only apply to areas that are in bloom. So if I look up at the sky, you can't see any of that. But when we are in like a bit of a like bright section, so not here, but like, you know, where that lightsaber is, or like over here, you can kind of see that dirt texture overlay. So it's an interesting effect. I probably wouldn't use it all the time, or maybe in certain areas for certain scenes, it might be cool. Having it on all the time is probably not, <laughs> not, not the best idea, but um, it's definitely a really cool effect that I think would be useful for quite a lot of cases. Now, the final thing that I wanted to show is the sponsor demo because I have some pretty cool things there as well. Okay, so in the sponsor demo, I've basically just added this kind of, uh, let me maybe just turn the dirt intensity off for now. I've added this sphere, which again, appears to emit light. Um, the sphere itself, in this case, I actually added a point light, like in the same position, which um, again, you don't have to do. You can just add it on the actual entity or parent it, but you can see what a big difference it makes, whether or not we actually add that point light. So this is without it actually emitting any light. And then if I bump that back up to like around six, you can, you can see what it looks like there. So it makes a big difference. The sun coming in also reflecting off of like the Taurus creates that. Now other kind of materials in the scene. So if we try and find like one of these, for example, um, if we make them emit, I think that one's this one over here. Uh, it, this also obviously works for textures. So if I make this emissive, even though we have a texture here and not a solid color, uh, it will obviously still kind of emit light and you don't have to emit that much light. You can set it to like one or like, you know, two and it will emit a little bit less light. You don't have to go like crazy with it, obviously. Um, but yeah, it also works for textures, uh, not just kind of solid colors. Anyway, let's just hit play and explore this scene a little bit. So you can see we have um, this kind of um, like greenish glow over here. Another thing that I think is quite cool if we go around to the other side is uh, the actual sky itself. Um, so you can see that like the sky, because the sky is bright, it kind of creates all of this here. Yeah, I put a little neon sign as well. That's one of the exciting things you can do with uh, emissive materials is actually neon signs, which I think is very important for any game. Um, but yeah, I think the, the sky is also one, one of the things that looks looks quite good with Bloom. Because if we have like a generally dark scene maybe, and then we have like this really bright kind of skylight source, having that be in Bloom uh, looks pretty cool. If I maybe pull this over here, I might actually increase the skylight intensity just a little bit so that we can kind of see that effect a bit more. So if I jump down here and take a look at the sky, you can see that all of that kind of light fill coming in here, which of course looks quite cool. And if we turn the uh, dirt intensity back on, then, then there you go. You have this kind of cool, uh, bright effect. 
So yeah, that's basically bloom and emissive materials. Very important to have in really any renderer. I think this is kind of exciting because there's honestly so many things you could do with this. I mean, even things like fire or particles are gonna look a lot better because we have this kind of extra light bleed going on, but even normal scenes with like a bright sky and, you know, auto exposure now, which will turn, which will kind of tone that down when I get around to adding it. Like, I think all of this um, definitely contributes to having a way more realistic renderer. So yeah, I'm really happy to finally get this in here. If you would like access to Hazel and you'd like to support Hazel's development, patreon.com slash the channel, I'll have a link in the description below, is the best way to support all of this. I say this all the time, but of course, Hazel would not be here if it wasn't for all of your support. So huge thank you to everyone who helps support the development of Hazel and everything I'm doing here on YouTube. Thank you so much. As I mentioned, there are just so many topics for devlogs running. I've got this massive list, so let me know if you want to see something specific for next time. Uh, but other than that, I've still got so many new features that I haven't shared yet. So yeah. I will see you guys next week. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.